Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Sandy Writes. Many writers and like creative people in general seem to struggle with mental illness and that's myself included. So disclaimer, um, I'm talking mostly from experience, I'm not saying this will apply to everyone but I know it applies to myself and there'll be at least like a couple of the people who this relates to. So I'm not a professional but I am speaking from experience. <laughs> And struggling with mental illness isn't like as charming or helpful or as inspiring as like some people seem to make out. And at the very least, writers are like so often stereotyped to be depressed. And I'm not joking when I say that there are people out there who think that creatives have to have some kind of mental illness in order to create some kind of art. And my opinion in one word is just... no. <laughs> Writing while being mentally ill, at least in my experience, can be borderline impossible. On a good day it can be incredibly difficult and on a bad day like it's not fun and you feel like quitting and just like giving up on opportunities and you just don't enjoy the one thing that used to bring you joy. And seeing as writing is the one thing that I truly love, not being able to do it is just it like breaks apart a little bit. <laughs> and it's always a fight to keep going and sometimes you just need support. And being stigmatised that you're broken or that you should be broken when you're a creative person is probably one of the worst things and it's the least helpful thing out of like everything. So from the experience of a writer with mental illness, this video is going to be about some things I do to try and keep myself writing even through the hard times. So let's begin. So number one is to make visual reminders of all the good things. My brain has a tendency to rev like, not revise, to erase all the good things and just like focus on the bad like hyper focus on the slightly negative or anything that isn't 100% positive. So I have a folder on my laptop and it's just full of like screenshots and pictures of like nice things people have said about my writing. And there's positive feedback on my stories, there's like really nice reviews for my book, there's inspiring quotes and there's like quotes from my own work that I'm proud of. Because sometimes you have to be your own biggest fan. This isn't something that I would find narcissistic, it's just something I find is like taking pride in your own work. So this is being pr like proud over narcissistic. And you have like every right to be proud of things you create, even if it took, like, no not even if, especially if it took you a lot of effort to get there. So number two is to read and write. This is something I've mentioned in videos or at least blogs in the past. Like, my biggest piece of advice for like any creative person is to like be some kind of sponge and absorb as much of that medium that you can. So if you're a writer, like write tons of books, read tons of books. It doesn't matter if the words are like really ugly and bad and that like, they're never gonna like see the light of day. You just get better by practicing and that's how you learn how to cope, that's how you find like routines that work for you. And that's how you decide like just basically how to get through it. <laughs> I wasn't thinking through that sentence. <laughs> Just reading and writing can feel like an impossible quest at some times because mental illness can make existing just completely exhausting. But So you just have to remember that no one is asking you to write a million words. Like, no one's writing you... No one's asking you to write a million words a day. Or like even tomorrow. But you shouldn't just like throw away projects because not working on it isn't practicing. Like even if it's something that you don't think is going well, it's just trying. I was going to say tr try your best and you don't succeed, but now I'm going to have a fix you stuck in my head for the rest of the day. <sighs> the next one is to follow your own schedule. There's always the feeling that you have to like follow X and Y and Z to become a writer or a published author or even like some kind of successful creator. I try and make this to apply to like any creative person, but it's going to be a focus on writing because I am a writer. <laughs> different things work for different people. You don't have to write every day just because someone said you have to write every day. Or you don't have to use a certain writing style or like plot planning method or etc. You can try a ton of different methods. You might find one that works for you, you might find one that doesn't, or you end up throughout that big journey finding or just creating something that applies to yourself and is unique to you. Like, are you like me and you need to write a couple hundred words a day and just like have a lie down? Do it. Do you need to like pour thousands of words into a plot outline just before you even start the chapter? Then do it. And does it take you a year to finish a draft, like me? At least you finished it. So next is to take a break. Sometimes like writing gets really tough and it's easy to just say you want to quit. But don't quit, just take a break instead. There's been so many times in my writing journey where I've stepped back and just said that like I can't do this anymore, I quit. 
But what I really need to do in those situations is just to take a decent break. Like save the document, close it down, put my laptop away, and just like step back from the project. And once I stopped writing entirely for about six months just because I needed a break, but I didn't quit entirely. And what I think most importantly is that you don't have to write about your own mental illness. The Own Voices movement is incredibly inspiring and it's helpful for so many people, but I feel like it brings an expectation for you to write about your own experiences, and you don't have to do it if you don't want to. Writing about your own experience can be triggering for some people, and it can send you backwards, and it's exhausting, it can be a lot of pressure. So you don't owe it to anyone, but like, do share your own stories if you want to. But is a need for your voice, there's a need for everyone's voice, especially ones from, I forgot the word, minorities, small groups, underrepresented, underrepresented people. I don't remember the actual word that I'm looking for right now. But there is a need for your voice and your experience on whatever topic you're experiencing. But you should remember that your feelings and your emotions are always the priority. So those are my four or five tips that I used to try and get through creative block and just writing with mental illness and existing with mental illness. So don't feel pressured to share if you want to, but in the comments below, just add some of your own tips to this idea. Like what keeps you writing? Do you write about your own experience or illnesses or do you, do you prefer not to? And if you're going to leave a comment, please keep this about writing tips and not trying to like cure or fix mental illnesses. Thank you. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Bye.